Hi, welcome to NZCN Tourism Webinar Series 2016. Um, this is Module 5 and it's all about um, getting some feedback and understanding the needs of your own customers. So it's about keeping your finger on the pulse. The focus that we've got today is the China FIT market or free independent traveller and um, tools and tips to understand it for your business where they're coming from. So what we're going to cover today is finding out what really matters to them. Essentially, um, from this, we'll be able to get an up update of our targets, likes, and any issues, concerns, or barriers to activation. And it will help you if you want to do any development work, prioritise um, your next steps. This is a cut-down version. If you want a fuller version, go to nzcntourism.co.nz where you'll find the full um, insights module and a lot more information on all sorts of topics around the China independent traveller. So Chinese travellers do want to tell us their experiences, particularly when we start talking to them. There are three key ways to gain insights and information. Um, I'm sure there are more, but if you follow the structure, um, you'll certainly go a long way to getting some information that can really make a difference. So the first is just yourself to ask visitors what's working for them. The second is to use existing information that's available um, from various sources. And the third is to build insights more formally with a research partner or um, doing your own more structured surveys. So if we start with number one, asking your visitors. Um, If you are talking to visitors, um, you can start in any way that you like, but a few key tips. Um, the first is be respectful and courteous, particularly around their time. They're on holiday um, and they may not actually have the time to, do, to talk to you, but certainly if you ask politely, many will. Um, if someone's really not interested, just move on and find someone um, else who is. And some may be aware, fearful that their language skills aren't good enough and certainly just say, look, it's okay. Um, I'm just wanting to ask some simple questions and your English is really good. I'm afraid my Chinese isn't and encourage them to participate. Um, but right at the beginning, let them know who you are, where you're from and what you're doing and why you're asking those questions and that it's really just about informal feedback to help improve the experience for others. Um, definitely tell them this is not for the government and that they're free to say whatever they like. Um, often in China something that is for the government won't necessarily elicit a very truthful response. Um, also as context, our Chinese visitors generally don't um, complain and they don't give negative feedback. So it's a matter of asking um, in a number of different ways in a number of times and reassuring them that they are free to give you honest and open feedback. So some quick um, questions that might work, what they liked, how you could improve the experience, what they would like more or less of, what's really important to them, and if they were to tell a friend about this, what would they say? If you think there are some issues that you want to explore, um, just say, look, we are concerned that we are um, doing what works for people and we'd like some advice on how we could improve. It, you need to really encourage them to participate with that. So if you're going to survey visitors, um, there are some common things that uh, we do, particularly around user experience. Um, and there are Questionnaires are often used when you want to get a measure of customer satisfaction um, and then potentially measure it again at a later date when you've done something that you think would improve it. And also to gauge customer interest. What is more interesting if you've got some options and choice or how many people really do want to do this thing? If you're interested in designing a questionnaire yourself, there are some really great online tools. You can go to Survey, Survey Monkey or MailChimp and download free easy templates. 
The, the main thing here is keep it really short. Do not ask a question that's not really important to you to know, otherwise it's a waste of your time and their time. Um, in terms of questionnaires, you can hand them out, um, leave them in a room um, or somewhere to get feedback for people who might like to, particularly in a accommodation situation. WeChat is really easy. If you have an official public account, you can run short surveys on WeChat. Or you could actually set up a tablet and ask a few key questions on departure. Incentives can be a great idea to help people participate and it could be something as small as a small discount off coffee. Just well, the one thing with this is it can be time consuming for you and for the visitors so just make sure that keeping it short and simple is probably the best. Social listening, and this is around looking at what is being posted online about you, your region, um, your sector. Um, but it is something that can be a bit time consuming, um, but if you do have time it's a great way to see how you are seen by others. And social listening and digital for Chinese is about looking and seeing what's happening in Chinese websites in yellow, in global web websites in blue and our own New Zealand websites. And you can go to those websites and um, just have a look and see and do your own search. In terms of well, what do we go to, um, this is the social media landscape for our China FIT visitors. Um, the actual framework itself is very similar to the framework um, that we use and is, u and, and is used and accessed globally. But many of the sites that are used most often by the China market um, are quite unique to Chinese. They can't use or have access to a lot of the global sites which are blocked on the Chinese, um, through Chinese media by the Chinese government. So we can look at New Zealand sites, look and see what's happening in global sites and then sites in China. The, some of the global sites, so at the very least look at and see what's happening on TripAdvisor um, and in places like Lonely Planet or anyone that has got a, um, a search site where organisations like you are and some of the accommodation aggregators um, are a good place to have a look as well. And then on global sites, um, WeChat, once you've got, if you have a presence there, you can actually use that um, and have a look through your networks at what is being said about you um, by collecting uh, people who are and friends who have got WeChat as they're coming through your business. But the ones that are particularly where social posting is happening is Ma Fong Wu and Chong Yo here. Um, to actually be able to search those sites, then, if all the postings are mainly in Chinese, you would need to actually get someone to help you if you don't read Chinese to see what is being said. But you could get a local person who does speak Chinese to give you a, a hand just to have a quick look. So, um, and this is pretty much summarising. Ratings are really important. Um, a three star rating is not good enough really. You need a four or a five in order to be chosen. Chinese don't generally give negative reviews, so you need a positive star rating overall and ideally lots of ratings. Using existing information, there is great information um, on the Tourism New Zealand website. It's well worth visiting there. There's geolocation information um, available from Geozone, Scoot and Curious. Geozone actually, I understand, provides this free, but if you're interested in geolocation information about where and when people are coming to and leaving your area, what their travel patterns are, um, and uh, getting more up to date with geolocation, uh, push notification possibilities, go and visit those organisations. Um, there is a lot more information on that um, in the digital module. And then other source um, information is just literally doing online searches um, and working in collaboration, collaboration with local partners. Some examples here are China Skinny, um, the New Zealand China Trade Association, China News and the China Daily, which give you a feel for what's happening in China and views. 
Um, you can also join Twitter and follow um, other organisations that are, and some of these are on Twitter, um, who are following them as well and get a feel. Just some examples of the geolocation tracking. Okay, the third step is if you want to build insights more formally, um, what do you do? And um, this is probably important if you're making any significant investment or if you're really unsure about something that's particularly important um, around communication with your business service or product. Um, you can certainly get paid research to inform that decision making and selection of a partner is probably one of the most important things. What you want is experience, recommendations, if you're putting something up to pitch either choose someone because you've got a good recommendation or limited it to two or three to get a quote from. Any more than that and it's time consuming and a waste for everybody. Look for an organisational match, does it feel right? Um, do they um, understand the kind of questions that you're asking? And be very clear in terms of the budget scope right from the start, is it going to work? So when you Talking um, to an agency, we have a list of things that you might want to put into the brief, um, and that really sums it up. So getting to know your market can make a real difference, um, it can give you feedback uh, to make sure that you make well informed decisions. This information feeds into strategic development planning in the Lean Canvas model, which there is more explanation of online. Um, but we do have some formats here um, for a brief and an insights uh, checklist and plan. So different ways to actually work out what you think you need to do and at what point um, can you get some information. But at the very least, have the confidence and uh, to ask visitors uh, directly what's going on for them.